the button. We are now recording. Okay, we're recording everybody. Um, Georg put the minutes in the link to the minutes in the chat. Thank you, Georg. You should have access to that. Um, I just a few things that I wanted to bring up. One was one of my action items from last week was to get uh, the chaos DNI group integrated or involved with the Google season of docs. And we have done that. So do we have the link handy, Georg? I can probably pull it real quick. I posted in the document. Okay, thank you. So it's posted in the document and I will also put it in the chat. So this is a uh, slightly different than the sum, uh, summer of code. Yeah, the Google season of docs. That yeah, so what, in the way that this, is, this one's structured, so the summer of code um, is actually the, the chaos project is an organization. Mm -hmm. In this one, the organization is actually the Linux Foundation. Okay. And then DNI is, you know, one of the, one of the, potential places where people could contribute. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So they had a couple other projects, LF projects as well. Um, so if you follow the link, you'll just see the two things that we put in there as candidates for the season of docs. So good to go on that. Actually, I have no idea. Gary, do you have any idea how much they pay? I haven't checked in a while, but they were talking about launching this program without pay in the first year. Okay, is this the first year? Yes, this did not exist before now. Yeah, oh. I remember hearing the announcement. I didn't understand that they were going to do these season of docs without pay though. That seems like odd. <laughs> seems odd to me too. What, what are they expecting to happen? I don't know. Um, yeah, can't answer that one. So I don't know. So anyway, that's all good to go. So thanks, Gary, for some feedback, and that's done. Um, I, I did want to talk. Did anybody have any questions on that one? No, that looks that looks promising. Although it could be said so without pay, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Yeah, I guess more to come as it kind of rolls yeah. out. Uh, let's we'll see the Google summer of code, I guess, while we're here, we are currently just, so everybody knows we're currently in the process of requesting slots. Just keep in mind that we do have Google summer of code applicants on this call. Um, right. so, um, we're currently in the phase of identifying potential students for the projects and then also requesting the number of slots. So that's just so everybody knows that's where we're at at the moment. And I think this ends relatively soon. I think it's towards the end of April when the request actually closes. Is that not right, Georg? You're like my checker of dates. Yeah, it's the 22nd, I think. Okay, so just not too long. I think we've already put in our slot request. So I think we're actually done at this point. Yep, and then the next thing is they will assign the slots within like two or three days. And then at the beginning of May is when we um, have selected our candidate and Google announces all the projects at the same time. And then the students who applied will know whether they got accepted or not. Okay, sounds good. So thanks for everybody's help on kind of pushing that through. Um, I did have uh, something that I'd like to share with folks here. I'm gonna put it in the chat. So this last Monday, 
the DNI work group put together what I thought was a really great table. So thanks. I don't know if you did that on the fly or <laughs> how you produced this thing, but it was a great way of identifying candidate metrics for the release coming up later this summer. And so if you take a look at the spreadsheet, um, who put this together, Georg? Uh, the table is, I put it together and then we filled it out in the DNI working group. Okay. So if you notice across the column A, you can tell me if I'm reading this right, Georg, but across column A or down column A are the focus areas, which at this point should resonate with any of the other working group members here. And then within those focus areas are the identified metrics. And you can kind of see that uh, they have that table at the top. Red basically means a no-go and green means looks like a good candidate. And then just some colors in between as um, potential candidates towards the release. Yeah, I really like that structure a lot. I do too, it, it's very clear. And then I'm- The and I working group guessing are the are the ones and zeros votes yes those were votes on determining the colors okay so just kind of everybody's individual take on the status of a particular metric is that right yep and above where you have the votes i give the um what that means plus one you think the metric is a good quality already, we should include it. Zero, okay. you think we should include it, but it needs work. And then minus one, if you think we should not focus on this for this release. Okay, that's great. I, I mean, I, I assume it went well. I think you were able to fill out this table within the course of one meeting, is that right? Yeah, it was like 15 minutes. So based on that, I would encourage folks in value or folks in risk to adopt something similar. It doesn't have to be like this, this meeting, but I think this is just a really nice way of thinking through the metrics. This is an encouragement, uh, <laughs> not a requirement. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> You're also invited to use the same document, just create a new sheet, and then you have multiple sheets for each working group one. That's a good idea, actually. That's a nice way of kind of centralizing things. We'll have to retitle the sheet, but yeah. Um, comments on this? I think it's awesome. Yeah, cool. I concur. All right. Um, why don't we just do that? Uh, or just put action items maybe to the work group, Skeorg, in the minutes, just to create tabs on this sheet. And actually, this will be super helpful, to be honest, if everybody's in the same spot, so that when Kevin is actually updating the website, <laughs> this will be a this will be a great first place to look on what those are. Perhaps we could even have a column of like, um, yes, done or something like that, or some way to indicate that, yes, this is the metric that needs to be on there. Because I think at this point, green, yellow, blue, and red just kind of indicate the potential mm -hmm. and does it indicate potential or interest. I think it indicates potential. I guess it's the same thing then. It, there's a potential that is it the potential to be implemented, the, the, the potential for high utility. <laughs> the way I would read it is the diversity and access diversity access tickets on okay. a diversity there uh -huh. has a real strong potential to be effective part of that release. Oh, 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 okay. All right. Now I'm getting it. So, all right. And so maybe we add just another color, like, <laughs> I don't know, bright orange. That means this one, put this in the release, you know? Yeah. You know, you know, it would be um, a, a helpful addition to something like this. If I'm thinking about implementing that it is um, some kind of column that indicates uh, complexity level technically and complexity level socially. So for example, if um, the, uh, family friendliness, yep. uh, it's probably not technically complex, but there might be some, I guess, organizational complexity or budget complexity, or mm -hmm. um, maybe an, an enumeration of uh, 
I don't know, look, barriers or something. Just, I know that that would be helpful on some of the other groups. Maybe the DNI group doesn't find it quite as helpful, but. Would you want to put it here? To me, this is a sheet that just indicates. Likelihood of release. Yeah. Okay. And I then. Mean, I would want to, like, I guess, you know, this could be what it is. It's really great at what it is. And um, if, if, our group, if a different group wants to add another column to keep track of what's hard and different ways, then, then we can do that as well. That'd be fine. I just want to keep the noise down on this document yeah, so yeah. that Kevin goes to publish. Yep. This is a great idea. Don't change anything on account of my idea. Just <laughs> think it under advisement. Okay. And then remember, just again, for the folks that are here from the working groups, that if, if you're a candidate, if it's a green candidate, um, it means that it has a, a detail page behind it as well. So, you know, so obviously we have the focus areas, we have the, you know, goals and questions and metrics that are kind of embedded in this entire sheet here. Um, but then there's a, there's a whole page that's dedicated to giving details behind something like diversity access tickets or code of conduct at event. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you have questions, you can ask now, but. So Gary, tell me if I'm wrong, but this, I assume this is the thinking in DNI as well. Yes, that is the thinking. And it can only be green if it already has that page. Okay. And yellow also means there is a page, it just is incomplete. Okay, that would make sense. And blue means that it might be able, you might be able to assemble that page and then red means it's just probably not going to happen. That's it. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, any thoughts from people other than what's been talked about so far? All right, cool. Uh, thank you very much, DNI Working Group, for putting this together and sharing it. Um, let's see. So I, that was, okay, I'm looking at action items from last week as well. Um, looks like we've knocked off a couple of those. Gary, you, this will be a funny one. Gary, you had an action item from last week, which was to create a pull request to the value. Did you do that? I believe I did. Let me check real quick. Okay. Or maybe Andy remembers if I did that. Where is that? I don't know. Yes, it's number 18. I froze there for a little while. I froze? No, Andy. I, I did. Oh, you did. So it's uh, pull request number 18. Okay, so it's there. Well, let's document that, yeah. Okay, and then um, okay. Andy, you had an action item from last week. You see it down there, put together a document of what metrics need implementing and what might be required? Yes, um, <clears throat> so I do have that. Uh, um, <clears throat> and I'm gonna use the same spreadsheet format that uh, okay. I use. Okay, so maybe the action item can just kind of carry over populating the spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, all right, great. Those are, that was actually it for action items. Um, so for ChaosCon North America, I'll just move to that one. Mm. Um, we are set in terms of date, so it's going to be the the day before chaos or day before Open Source Summit North America starts, mm -hmm. which I think is the twentieth of August. Is that right? Um, yes, it is. Okay, so ChaosCon North America will be August twentieth, two thousand nineteen. Right. Um, at the moment, we have two rooms kind of like what we did in Vancouver, Sean, 
Yeah, yeah. So we have one room where we can um, actually do presentations and that kind of stuff. And then another new room where we could do breakout, where you, if you wanted to do some like auger work, mm -hmm. or yeah. folks from Baturgy want to do some Grimoire Lab work, that could happen there. So at the moment we have one room, we have two room, one room for lecture, one room for work. As it stands, we can change this, I assume a little bit. I know the facility, I've been there several times and they're pretty big rooms. So I think one of the rooms is a, seats 100 and then one is 50. So then the question that I kind of have for people is, um, do we, it's mostly just about money. <laughs> so do we want, do we want coffee? Do we want lunch? Do we want our own lanyards? Do we want, <laughs> how do we want to structure this, right? So I have the, kind of the money, money question. So the question that I have with, in response to your questions is, is this something where we want to put together an organizing committee again? Or Probably do we just so. want to organize it here on the weekly calls? Maybe you're right. Maybe we should put together an organizing committee and you can opt in and then we can answer those questions more locally there and report back to this call. Sounds good. Sign me up. All right, let's do that then. Sean, so you're on. Can I show you something really quick? Yes. Of okay. course. Uh, these are items, these are poker chips that we had made for Hyperledger. Ooh, I love those. <laughs> and uh, these have the project logos on the front. And then on the back, we have, you know, contributor 2019. I like it. These nice. are super cheap. I, these are like <laughs> a dollar quantity 25, you know. <laughs> and if you got, 50 of them, I think you get free shipping from Colorado. But I was, <laughs> I mean, I was really surprised. These are like really high quality chips and the, the print is, I, I expected for the price, it was just gonna be a sticker that was stuck on, but it's like, it's really nicely done. Do you, anyway, have, the, do you have the site that you used? Uh, I think it's called Chip Labs. I'll, I'll find it and send just it to find you. find it and uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, it, I like it because it's kind of unique to be honest with you. Yeah, and, and it's cheap enough that you can do one per event, right? Uh huh. You could do like a Chaos Con NA 2019 contributor or whatever. Yeah. You know. I like it. And they were they were pretty popular. So yeah. Anyway, I'll send a link. Cool. Uh all right, cool. The other so in terms of um like poker chips, I can just kick in and buy those if they really are a dollar a piece. I've got funds here. Um, but if we go slightly larger, we do have, we do have just, you can put this in the notes, Georg. We do have some dollars left over or not even left over. We have some dollars from, um, from Google summer of code last year. If you recall the organizations get dollars. All oh, right. That's right. Yeah. It's not a ton of money, but I, sh Gary, you can put me on the organizing committee too. And I can find out how many dollars we have in there. They're just sitting idle. And that could help offset things like coffee. That was at least my initial thought. Yeah, I, I always like to think that coffee will be inexpensive at these things, but it's not, so. Yeah, coffee seems to be where they get you. <laughs> so, so anyway, maybe something that we can bring up in the organizing committee and then I think I'd have to get board approval to spend those dollars, but that would. I think be a performant thing. It's not like chaos count isn't a really good use of chaos money. Yeah, nonetheless, <laughs> I would follow protocol. I would, I would be surprised that if anybody responded differently, but we'll see. It would be nice to have community bridge set up so that we can do all the expenses through community bridge. That's a good idea. Can you put that in the notes? Even though I have no idea how community bridge works. <laughs> I would love to use it for... <laughs> I would, but my understanding is we have to come up with our own match. Uh, I don't know. This is. Uh, this is I like, think we can move the money we already have into Community Bridge and then have a transparent ledger oh. for managing the money there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's um, the Community Bridge team is like really, they really want to help people get on board. They're mm -hmm. so they're pretty responsive. Okay. Do you think they would do something like this? 
Like if we have existing, right now our dollars, our Google Summer of Code dollars just went to the LF. You know what I mean? Because they could receive the dollars. Right, right. I, that I can't speak to, but I mean, okay. I someone needs to set up an account and, uh, you know, just talk to them. Okay. Actually, you can, where'd you put that note, Gary, in the minutes? Where I put your name next to it. Yeah, I was just going to say, put that down as an action item for me. So the the way that I understand Community Bridge is what the Linux Foundation does right now with managing our account, and we always have to go through them. Community Bridge is an interface with a transparent ledger that gives us autonomy to do those things without having to go through the Linux Foundation at all times. Do they give like a couple people the authority to actually spend the money? Last yeah. I heard, it's one person. Okay. But that might change when they okay. improve on it. I will put the, put that, I'll just put that in my conversation with them over the course of the week. I'm excited to try to do it too, to be honest with you. I like yeah. the idea of it. I love the idea of it. I, yeah. When I went to the page, I was a little bit befuddled about where I was going to get 15 grand or whatever to match. I don't, yeah, I think they match or something. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So if that's the case, um, let's do it. <laughs> right. uh, more information on the way yeah okay um i guess honestly that's i think that's it for me um do any of the working groups have updates that they want to so on ChaosCon before we move on oh, sorry yeah in the document i put a draft for the cfp and if you look at it there's also a uh, schedule i'm gonna post this in here. So I I'm proposing that we open the CFP basically today and then close it at the end of May like we did last year. Um, announce the talks to individuals on June 10 and then um, publish the schedule on May 16 okay. or June 16. And then have our nice event on August 20. You just want to use this link for the submissions? Uh, the one at the bottom where I set draft for CFP submission form. Yep. That is the one that I set up just now. Okay. To request I, the we could possibly do it through the LF if you care, or if this is just easy enough to do it this way. This is easy enough. Okay. The Registration I would like to do again through the LF so that okay. chaos con is an option when everyone registers for I think I put that in the request it when I had to fill out that request form. Yeah, I had put it tied to the OSS NA registration. Okay. I would okay. also we'll talk about it in the committee. Okay, sounds good. Okay, okay. Um, any other items ChaosCon related? Okay. Um, so now I guess I'll ask the question. Any anything from work groups that people want to talk about on their mind? Again, this is kind of an open call. So. Um, so one we I don't. The, the time is so short. Um, Hyperledger is working. We have our, uh, our uh, they're no longer internships, their mentorship program. Mm -hmm. It closes on Monday. And we have a, a very enthusiastic response uh, from guys. And we're trying to reach out. Uh, and it's going to be too late to reach out to the DNI working group for our next meeting on Monday. Mm -hmm. If you know any forums uh, for college age women who uh, if you could share our link or if you could uh, tell tell me and I'll pass it along I, we have some funds to buy like targeted ads but I'd really rather just reach out to organizations mm -hmm. you know could directly you a link to the call in the chat yeah absolutely and I assume these are off-site mentorship programs uh, yeah these are all uh, these are these are uh, paid remote, right? You would be you would be doing this from home or mm -hmm. wherever, right? Uh, da, 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 I'm trying to get there. Sorry. 
No, no worries. All right, so there's the link. I don't remember how much the money is, uh, mm -hmm. but it's we don't do unpaid internships, right? So okay. Uh, yeah. So that's that's the link, and I don't see the the details, but. If anyone can help, I, I really appreciate it because we're we're really heavy on the on the guys right now. Okay, no, I appreciate that, um, Sean. I'm thinking I I would assume. I mean, locally, I think I can help. It wouldn't be a super broad reach, but we have no. programs here at the university. Yeah, I'm going to share this with the CSSD uh, Consortium of Science and Social Technical Systems mailing list as well. That's a good idea. As well as the uh, ACM CSW and ACM CHI mailing list. Um, Can you put that link into where you're sharing it, just so? Uh, well, I have to find it. But Brian has it. Some sense. Yeah. Yeah. Or just you know, CC me. You know, R Jones at LinuxFoundation.com or .com. Sorry. Oh man. .org. <laughs> uh, yeah. R and, Jones. R Jones at what? Yep. R J O N E S. At what? I'm sorry. LinuxFoundation.org. Okay. Sorry. I'm processing too many pieces of information simultaneously. No worries. I put it in chat. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for for the assist because we, you know, time is short and it's like, we. I think it's like 95% male right now for the mm -hmm. applications. It's like, oh no. Uh, are you, does, does anybody know, does NC WIT target college, is that for college age as well? I don't know. I'm, I'd have to, I, I'll ask about this as well, but here, right when I get off this call. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this organization, but they do a, a lot of really good transformational work in this space. Cool. Um, so I'll, I'll follow up and then I might, I'll ping you out of band. Thank you. Yep, you bet. Okay, cool. Um, so there was, uh, Silence on the working groups. Sounds like everybody's, I know a lot of the work was there. Um, and I know that there's good work being done. So um, I can give some updates. Randy, you can go ahead. Uh, let's see. So some comments on the value working group. Uh, last week, um, we decided to, uh, I think, create a reference implementation for the um, metrics that we're going to propose. Um, and we would very much like uh, Google Summer of Code folks uh, to help us with that. Uh, so if you if you are interested, um, please join our call on Friday. You can you can look at our notes to, to learn more. Uh, one of the things that I think is going to be interesting and maybe a little bit different about the metrics for the value working group is that we talked about the idea of parameterized, parameterized metrics. I think I pronounced that right. Parameterized. <laughs> parameterized <laughs> metrics where uh, we would create, for example, metrics around labor investment. And one input to a labor investment metric would be, for example, uh, number of commits, number of issues closed, things, things of that nature, which, which we can extract today. And that plus uh, the parameters, which, which might be labor rates, cost to, fix, um, cost to fix an issue, would we think be a meaningful value that, okay. that an organization would use? So parameterized metrics, something- And I would assume these parameters could be set locally or publicly. Uh, could be done locally, could be done publicly. And the-, the um, the metrics that we will extract for the reference implementation will use um, the tools that Chaos already has, um, Augur and, and Percival and, and so on. And uh, we'd really, if there is a, a Google Summer of Code student who's interested in helping us put that together, 
and build up this this new technique of parameterized metrics, uh, that'd be awesome. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited about that. And so it's not, it, from, from the sounds of it, it sounds like value being on the calls for the last couple of weeks, value and risk are really striving towards getting these reference implementations or kind of seeing the metrics in, in real life. I, you can yep. correct me if I'm wrong, but that's yep. what I'm getting a sense from these two working groups. Yeah, that's, that's very much an, uh, an interest that I have. Um, be quite easy for us to list metrics. I mean, we could brainstorm together and come up with metrics, but uh, I think there's just so much value to be had in doing an implementation, you know, getting the feedback, seeing, seeing how the metrics actually work in practice. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of learning to be had in actually building them out in a reference implementation. Cool. Um, and Sean, like I said, I, I think risks feels like they're doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so actually, I mean, I feel like with value and risk, um, if you're doing some of this work in Augur, Sean, mm -hmm. are these going to be public instances of Augur? Yeah, I'll make some. We can see when we get it all wired up. This will be okay. Um, the other thing that I know, Andy, just to keep on your radar, that that risk is taking a look at is on the sample metrics that they're looking to deploy, they're also looking at sample projects. And they're specifically looking at OpenSSL, LibreSSL, and Boring SSL. Just as, as a way to, these are the projects that may be of interest to folks in the risk area. And so kind of deploying the metrics in meaningful projects. So you may want to think about projects that are on too. What was the third project? Boring. Boring SSL. Okay. Apparently it's a Google thing. I'd it's never heard of it. And I think it's spelled like boring. Like people are boring. So um, I'm I really believe in pouring all our energy onto onto you know fewer number of things. Uh, so I think SSL is awesome and I would love to make that a also a focus for value then. If those can be the target sample communities across two different projects. That would be great. Yeah. Sean, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If we use the same pool of projects, that's for both value and risk. That's not a terrible idea. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. So I'd be interested in knowing for those three projects, like, like who are the key users of those projects? Well, open SSL, everyone. <laughs> Do you have a web browser? <laughs> yeah. well, 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 that I know, but um, but you know, presumably there's going to be somebody out there who really gives a damn about vulnerabilities in Open SSL. Maybe it's a financial company. Maybe it's a defense yeah. company. Sure, sure. You know, somebody who's got like staff who actually you know drills into these protocols and you know does their own assessment of of you know where the vulnerabilities are to me that would be a real interesting type of an organization to talk to what i think oh did you have something to say sean no i was agreeing i was going to say i think in the in the risk group that the call that was yesterday jessica who's also on the call is trying to engage those organizations that you're talking about andy i don't have the names but trying to get them involved in the calls just so they can see the deployed metrics on these particular projects, um, really just to, to generate more conversation. So. Yeah, um, so if, if you guys have got a, a set of target companies, um, I think we should be talking to them also for value. And I, I think we'll learn more by having a narrower, narrower focus of organizations than if we, if we are more distributed. Agreed. Do we have a sense on who those might be with respect to value? Like I think in the in the risk side of things, it's kind of coming from, isn't it electrical devices right now, Sean? Or which one for risk? The companies that are kind of involved. They're they're, they're yeah they're safety critical operations. I think Jessica's uh, pretty wired in in the med device industry, and I have a bunch of experience there also. So I think that's that's where it's coming from, and 
she's given us uh, a few good clues about what might be useful, and that's what we're shooting for. Yeah. In, in value, I've been thinking basically of a, of a target list of open source program offices. And, you know, there's, there's dozens of them. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be nice to have kind of a second level of filtering, which is open source program offices that have got, you know, critical security issues. You I think know. the most sensible, if that's the, if that's kind of off the top of your head, the most sensible group, are you familiar with the to do group? No. T O D O. Um, they're a pretty high powered group of folks. I think representing open source program offices often. And I mean, we could explore the opportunity of trying to get the value work in front of some folks that are involved with the to-do group. Oh, um, I will for sure. So maybe the first step would be kind of get these reference implementations built out around these particular projects that can serve as that kind of the grease the wheels way of thinking about value. And then conversations can come from that. So personally, I'd like to do it in reverse order. I'd like to talk to people about the idea of value okay. and ask what they would like and what they would find interesting in a reference implementation and use right. that to inform our work. All right. Um, let's see here. All right, well, let me start seeing kind of what I can do in that regard. Of bringing people to the value discussion. Um, yeah, I mean, so for me personally, uh, of course, um, the more the better. Yeah, all right, I hear you. All right, cool. All righty. But I, I will say last week, you know, we had a really good turnout. You know, we had like seven people. It was our second call. Okay. So I was, I was really encouraged by that. And you know, the, the door's wide open. Uh, we really want people, both developers and people who've just got ideas about, um, about value metrics to participate. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, any other updates? Working groups? Kind of got the DNI update. We know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we renamed the, I think it's been since the last meeting that oh, we has. officially renamed growth, maturity, and decline to evolution. So we've evolved and um, we're meeting every other week now and continuing to run down uh, the issues related to code and starting to work on issues related or metrics related to issues. Cool. Um, where are we at website wise on that? I'm guessing it's not updated. The, the chaos website. Yeah. Like our own working group names evolution. I can just it be quicker to do in the minutes. I can go back and look. Um, I can, I can just issue some pull requests to get that updated. That's not a big deal. Oh, if it's not done, I'll do it, Sean. Okay. Okay. Any other items? All right, very good. Um, nobody's got anything. Top of their head. We're good. At least I'm good. I'm good. I got nothing. <laughs> I take silence as nothing. So <laughs> uh, until next week for a lot of folks on this call. And is GMD meeting tomorrow or are you not tomorrow? Not tomorrow. Right? Evolution, sorry. Ah. Evolution is no longer meeting. Or evolution is meeting. Growth between the clients is not. We don't accept this. So is evolution meeting tomorrow? I don't think you are. Um, no, it's not. Okay. And uh, but but that means common is meeting on Thursday. 
Yep. So the next week meetings this week are common on Thursday and then value on Friday. So, all right, cool. Cool. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. See you later. Yeah.